Good morning everybody and welcome to worship this morning. Today we're going to be thinking about the second week of Advent and at church yesterday on Sunday we were able to light the second of those candles on our Advent wreath. And we're going to be thinking about the theme of faith and today Bishop Philip is going to be sharing to you about some brave people who have amazing faith in what God can do and they step out and they say yes to God even if they might not know all the answers or be completely confident they're completely confident in God. So this morning we'll light our advent candles in church and those will come up on the screen. I just want you to take a moment of stillness as you watch those candles as we begin our worship and then we'll have a song and then I'll leave you with Bishop Philip to talk about some brave people. So let's have that moment of stillness as we look at these two candles. up the door.
Hello, I'm Bishop Philip, and welcome to the second of these special acts of collective worship for Advent and for Christmas. And here's our theme. We're thinking about getting ready for Jesus and how in Advent we get ready in a double way. First preparing for his birth at Christmas, but then also looking ahead to that day when he'll return. And today we're going to be inspired by an amazing person who did just that, who got ready for, G- for Jesus. But let's begin, as we always do, with our prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord God, help us to use this season of Advent to be ready for your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth at Christmas. Give us hope as we wait for him to return in glory. For he is the light of the world. Amen. Now, it's perhaps easy to guess which room in my house we're in today. We're at my study, obviously. Here's my desk and here's my computer. And I hope you can see this screen because I want us to do some thinking today about brave people. I've chosen some of the bravest people I've ever heard of, and I want you to tell, them, tell, tell you about them. So let's look at our first brave person, see if you recognise any of these. You may not recognise this person, but you can probably guess what their job is. This is a man called Johnson Bahari, and he was a soldier. He served in the British Army during the Iraq War, and he was incredibly brave. Twice he returned to a burning tank to rescue colleagues and save their lives. And because of his courage, he was given the Victoria Cross, the greatest medal that any member of the armed forces can win for courage. He's a really brave man, a soldier. Often soldiers are brave people, aren't they? Now, I wonder if you recognise this next person. This is a woman called Greta Thunberg. And of course, she's a tremendous campaigner for against climate change and for us looking after the planet. She's really brave because lots of people criticise her, lots of people worry her and don't like what she says, but she will not be silent. She stands up for the planet and motivates young people in doing just the same. So she's a really brave person too. Who's our next brave person? Now, I bet you recognise this man. This is, of course, Marcus Rashford. He plays for Man United, but we'll forgive him that. He's brave not just as a footballer, but as a campaigner. When he was a little boy, he often went to bed hungry. And so today, he stands up for hungry children and for families struggling to make ends meet, especially in this pandemic, and campaigns that people should be properly fed and particularly receive free school meals during the holidays. So he's another brave man, isn't he? Who's our next brave person? Now, when I think of bravery, I think of people doing things like this. This is a man called Nick Wallander. And he's walking on a tightrope across the Grand Canyon. Imagine that. Bonkers, isn't it? That's real bravery, isn't it? Doing anything that stupid. And next we have, now some of you may recognise this brave woman. She's called Rosa Parks. Some time ago in the United States, there was segregation where black people and white people had to live separately and use separate facilities. Rosa Parks didn't like that. So one day she got on a white-only bus and caused a tremendous kerfuffle, which led to the civil rights movement and much greater justice for black people in the United States. So she was brave as someone who stood up for justice and for truth. And who's our next brave person? Who's this? Well, of course, it's Mary. It's the mother of Jesus. You may not think of Mary as being all that brave, but I think she's one of the bravest people ever. One thing we do in Advent is allow ourselves to be inspired by people in the Bible and in history who've got ready for Jesus. So let's think about Mary's story and what she did to get ready for Jesus and how we can learn from that. But in order to do that, we're going to go into another room in my house. So see you in a minute. So here we are back in the dining room. Look, here's the Advent wreath. There's the candle that we lit last week. And here's Mary who we're thinking about because God had a plan for Mary's life. Let's remember the story. You can read it yourself in your Bible, Luke chapter 1. So one day, Mary, who was just a young girl at this point, 14 years old perhaps, she was engaged but not yet married to Joseph, when an angel came to visit her, an angel called Gabriel. Well, of course, Mary was terrified. Who wouldn't be if an angel turned up? But the angel said, don't be afraid. You have found God's favour. And then... The angel told Mary 
what the plan was. Listen to what the angel said. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And the angel said amazing things about what this baby Jesus is going to be like. He'll be called the Son of the Most High, the angel said. Well, Mary thought for a bit, and then she said to the angel, how can this be? Don't be daft, she said. How can I possibly be going to have a baby? I'm not married yet, she said. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. God's power will come upon you, the angel said. And so the child in your womb will be holy. Well, now Mary had a great big decision to make. What on earth was she going to do? If she said yes to the angel, if she became pregnant before she was married, oh my goodness me, back in those days, it would have been a terrible kerfuffle. Joseph would have got rid of her. People would have disapproved of her. Her family would have been cross. But on the other hand, how could she say no to God? So Mary thought, and I no doubt, no doubt, have no doubt she prayed, and then she gave her answer. Listen to what she said. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary said yes. That's where her bravery and courage comes from. She said yes to God's plan. And because of that, she gave birth to Jesus. She brought God's son into the world. Because of her childbearing, we can be set free by Jesus. God had a plan for Mary's life. Mary said yes. Now here's the amazing thing. God has a plan for your life. Doesn't matter if you're young or old, doesn't matter if you're black or white, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, doesn't matter if you're an amazing brain box or sporty or a comedian or whatever gifts you've got, it doesn't matter. God has a plan for your life. Remember, God's plan for Mary's life, it was to bring Jesus into the world. And in the same way, God's plan for your life is that you share Jesus' love with others, that you live the kind of life that Jesus wants you to live, that in you, people can see Jesus and his care for everyone. That's God's plan for you. He's got a plan for your life. The only question is, what will you say? Will you say yes to God's plan or no? Mary is a wonderful Advent person because she said yes to God's plan for her life. So this Advent, one of the best ways we can get ready is to say yes to God as well. Think, what's God's plan for your life? How does he want you to make Jesus' love known in the world? And are you ready to say yes to that plan like Mary did? So we're going now to light the next candle in our Advent wreath. We light the taper. And we're going to light this one here at the back. So can you see that? We're two weeks into Advent, so two of our candles have now been lit. And we're going to pray, asking Mary to inspire us. So as, you, as we make this prayer, look at this lovely image of Mary. Look at how prayerful, how serene she is. And let's pray with her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Advent people who inspire us to get ready for your Son. We thank you for Mary. You had a plan for her life and she said yes. And we thank you that you have a plan for our lives too. That like Mary, you want us to make your Son's love known in the world. Help us to hear that plan and to say yes. Amen.